Hello guys, Jagbir Singh back with another video of Katia V5 software and in this particular video I will tell you how to make assemblies in Katia V5. So let's get started. So you can see in front of me I have my product structure opened up already. So let me show you how to open it up again if you are not sure how to. You go on file, you click new, you scroll down and find product double click on it so they are asking for a part number I let it be product one and click OK so in order to have assemblies you need to have at least two or more than two parts so this is going to be very basic principles and fundamental assemblies that I'm going to show you so I'm going to quickly make two parts in front of you and I will show you how the assembly will work so in this particular video I'm just going to show you how to make two different parts under one parent structure so that it becomes more organized and easier for us to actually make assemblies with those two parts. So what I would recommend you is you always make the number of sub products that are required as per the number of parts. What I mean by that is if I want to have assembly of two then I will insert two more new products or simply two new parts and let's say I'm going to name one enter and similarly I click again on the product and insert a new part let's say two as its name click OK so they're asking do you want to define a new region for the point click yes to define the origin I say click yes there we have so we have two different parts one is part one and part two so don't forget to toggle between when you are done with the sketch of part one and then you need to move to part two as well so what I mean by that is right here I'm going to work on part one and let's say I make a rectangle a rectangular block for, for the same I need to have a sketch I choose this particular plane as a sketch I'm going to make a rectangle let's choose a center rectangle to save our time I choose a center rectangle I'm going to dimension it randomly I'm working in metric so let's say 120 this side and 60 in width there we go so now I'm going to pair this thing to a specific dimension whichever looks okay to me. So let's say I'm going to click on this and 20, let me see, I would say 40. There we have. So now I would like to make a hole in the middle. So it is going to be uh, basically assemble assembly of two part one male and one female part just to make a small and very basic assembly to show you how it is going to work so now I would make another uh, feature onto this onto the same part I'm going to make a hole in the middle you can also use pocket for the same you can make a sketch and do this or you, you can simply click on the hole and choose it is it will try to choose the center point but in this case it haven't chosen so you can always click on position sketch and then specify you're, you're going to choose the point and the origin itself and try to go inside then well it's not there so try to give the dimension itself that will make your life easy from one side it's going to be 30 and from the right side it's going to be 60 so that is the middle itself there we have and now what we're gonna do is I'm going to increase the diameter to let's say 20 and it is going to be a through all 
up to last well instead of through all let's see i'm just going to insert a particular depth so type is simple is let me have it to be 20 20 seems fine let the diameter be 30 there we go it ended up being through all anyways so let it be so the thickness is 40 itself so that's fine so this is one part so now we, we would like to make another part itself which we will be using in assembly and in upcoming video I will show you how to actually make that assembly using different constraints that we might need to use so the second part is going to be our the female part in which we need to make sure that the female part goes right in right in there so this female part will be attached to the male part which we are going to make right now which is part 2 so let's say I'm going to design it right now and I would like to have it to be a cylinder with an extrusion which will fit this particular hole what I mean by that is I'm going to make a sketch again and now I have to let's say I'm going to make a simple circle all right so now it might be confusing to some people that why am I not making it on the origin I just don't want to confuse you guys to just understand that I'm just trying to maintain a particular space in between these two just to avoid overlapping of the parts if you don't feel comfortable doing this we can also make it in the middle itself and then separate later on so let's say I'm going to make this particular sketch and I will keep the diameter to be 60 and the smaller diameter should be this one so in practicality we always try to make perfect fit so there was an option let me show you I did it quickly sorry about that so there was an option that appeared I clicked on project 3d elements I clicked on the 3d element and now they're asking do, do I want to keep a link between the product well you can it's your option but I mostly choose no that I don't want to have a link between these two and then I click OK so now that particular sketch is projected onto the sketch that we are working on right now so we can see that we have this particular part now that we can actually extrude if we want to or what we could have simply done is we can simply delete this we can just extrude the bigger part which is going to be right here click on pad uh, just to avoid reverse direction and I will keep it to be 60 and similarly I'm going to make a small hole just like that so what I mean by that is this part right here the new sketch is going to be on here and I'm going to project the feature the circle feature onto this and will extrude this or pad this by 40 and click OK so now I have two parts although it appears to be one but I can see that when I'm going to choose it so this is the first part and this is the second part itself so let's see if I, I double click on the product I'm going to use the compass in order to move the part so this is how it works I'm going to drag the compass and left click hold the compass drag it and keep on the part that you want to move so you see when it uh, uh, appears to be green and you can see aut automatically part 1 is highlighted it means it has hold part 1 and now you can move in the direction that you want to so you can drag the part wherever you would like 
let's say you want to go back and forth you can go this way if you want to rotate the path you can hold the angle and rotate it similarly along UW you can and all other angles as well if you want to reset it you can just press escape and control Z it will come back to the original position but on whichever part you want to adjust or control all you need to do is just bring compass anywhere outside from the initial position and just select the part itself so now I didn't e even need to snap the compass onto the second part but it still appeared to be green because I selected that so now I can move part 2 as well so I have two different parts which I showed you similarly in next video I will show you how to make the constraints between these two parts in order to complete the assembly. Thank you for watching this particular video and do not forget to subscribe, like and share the video. Thank you.